Hey there everybody, it's Nathan Cool with NathanCoolPhoto.com and in this tutorial I want to cover two items that I've gotten a lot of requests for lately. One is to step through some of what I do on a shoot while I'm shooting interior real estate photography and two is more on the lighting. So I've got a really good problem room I want to go through. This is it. This is the finished shot and it was a lot of challenges because of the size, some of the colors. If you take a look at the ambient shot beforehand, yeah, you can see where there's a lot of challenges here to get this right using lighting. This was shot at half a second at ISO 320F 7.1. I'm going to go through a lot of those settings and also then what it took to light it, believe it or not, that was done with just two flash units. I'm going to talk about what those were, how they were set up, how I went through the process, how I decided on what I was going to do for my settings and also what I do to edit it. Now I'm going to cover this from a very high level so it doesn't take an hour to make this video so we can keep this short and sweet, but I do cover a lot of this in a lot more detail if you want to get into the nitty gritty of this in two of my ebooks. You can download them right now. Links down in the description for this video. First one is on interior uh, real estate photography and the other is my lighting guide. Those will show a lot of information, especially the lighting guide will show the various lighting setups with the diagrams, the flash equivalents, all those things that you would need as you are on site. In this case though, we're going to be able to walk through this, see some of my thought process and also the editing for this. So you're ready to get started? Let's go. So here we are starting off in Lightroom. You can see this is the finished product. This is what I ended up exporting out to the customer. But after that, you can see on the film strip, there's a whole lot of shots down here of what it took to make this happen. So one of the first things even before that you can see where I'm shooting different ambient shots, trying to figure out where that exposure should be. And here I am, this is the one that I settled on and it's got a slew of problems. If we go in here, you can see there's light bloom coming off of this. There's flare. The colors aren't right uh, on the cabinets, the ceiling, nothing. Now, another problem here too is what I call light disparity, where we've got uh, a far room that's very bright, but look over here, we've got it's very, very dark in this area. And then of course, then we've got a lot of bloom coming in through the windows. So this is easily fixable with flash, but what I need to know is where these ambient artifacts are gonna go away. Something I explained quite a bit throughout those two eBooks that I mentioned, interiors and lighting guides. So what I've done is I go to my go-to settings. This was at first when I was shooting this, the magical number of that ISO 320 F7.1 that I talked so much about. And also, by the way, you can check out that high ISO video that I have um, a few videos back to learn more on why these settings won't matter so much, but it really works to your advantage to get a higher ISO on this um, for a lot of reasons, especially when it comes to flash. So anyways, at ISO 320 you have 7.1, half a second. Then I go up to my magic number, which is keeping all that the same except using one one hundredth of a second. And sure enough, all those ambient artifacts go away. So far, so good. Now what I want to do is light it up. And that's what this did. Now this, because it's got such a high ceiling, right? This was about an 18 foot ceiling. And also because the colors are so dark, I don't even try to do a bounce flash. This was shot through a shoot through umbrella, an STU, a stoop. So very simple $5 modifier. I've got a link to the one that I used down in the description for this video. You can see there's some problems though in that I do have a very harsh shadow going on up here, easily fixed. And by the way, I've got tutorials on that and also in my advanced editing guide how to fix up. I'm going to show you a technique now on how to get around that. First though, this is using the key light. So key light is your permanently placed light near the camera. This one has a shoot through umbrella and as you know through my guide and whatnot, you keep that light far away from the umbrella. That way you get a lot of diffusion through it. I'm using an AD400 because it also has a frosted element on the front of that bulb and that gives me a little bit of extra diffusion and I can have as much power as I want. This probably used quite honestly only about a quarter power off of the um, AD400, maybe more. But anyway, so now I start flashing around. I start seeing where I'd be comfortable with the flash amount. And look what I'm doing on the histogram, just like I talk about on the exposing to the right. Get rid of those highlights. 
So now I'm going around, I'm pretty comfortable with this. Now I have to get the other room. This is where a fill flash comes in. And this is where I put another light. You can see here's an 8200 and it's doing a ceiling bounce. I'm not too worried about a ceiling bounce here compared to using a shoot through umbrella because I don't have a high ceiling. Yes, these elements are dark, but one thing I'm after here is to get color. And I knew that I was already getting color into the kitchen by this test shot. So I can still see some color on the wall in here. So that's really what I'm after here. So that will still help. I don't have to use as much power out of the 8200. Still got this shadow thing going on up here. So then what I do is I start testing. Here's a little bit more power out of it. Maybe I'm happy. I move along a little bit more power than out of the 8400, tone it down. Okay, now I'm happy but I've still got the shadow. So I start spinning around the light stand that has the shoot through umbrella on it. And eventually I get something that has a bit of a softer shadow on it. So that's not as bad. I could use that to help repair that if I want to. And that's just spinning the light stand kind of around its near camera. I just turn a little bit, shoot, turn around. Sometimes even the umbrella is facing the other way, just so I get something that's softer in that problem shadow area. So anyways, I walked over and it's like, I want to get that a little bit better. So here's me, hello, wearing my mask. And I've got that pointed up a little bit higher so I can get a little less bloom. And I'm not worried about this up here because I've already got the, the one shot to get rid of the shadow. Now, once again, this doesn't take as long on site, but I want to describe this in detail for you. So you know what's going on in my mind as I'm running through this house. This whole shot from beginning to end was probably two minutes long. Then I just move over to the other side real quick and you notice I'm not using a cam ranger. Yes, I am clicking that little trigger on my belt. That makes me go really fast. And so I'm just going from one side, boop, I just walk over to the other side of the kitchen, boop, I'm done. So I did a couple different uh, angles with it, which also then can change the amount of flash power. So instead of changing the flash power on the unit, you can just bend it back and forth. You can see here, this one was shot almost straight up. Then I tilted a little bit farther back and boom, that's fine. Now I've got some different flash exposure to work with. Last but not least, I want to get a window pull in there. So I start flashing the windows. And as you know, this is that darkened mode window pull footage that at first looks very strange, but works out very well in post-processing. The two that I ended up with was this one for the main window here in the living room. And then also another one where I'm shooting here, these windows. You can see there's me and I'm holding here uh, an 8200. And that's what I had on the stand there. So that was all that I needed. Now let's get the these into uh, Photoshop and do some editing. So I marked which ones these were. So I'm just going to select all that footage like that. And I can right click and go edit in and then open as layers in Photoshop. Okay, so now these are all loaded in Photoshop. Let's just zoom in here a little bit. We'll make it all fit. This is the ambient layer on top and we'll just shut that off for now. And here's that shot, I'll turn it on and off, that was to patch up that ceiling. A little less harsh shadow. Yeah, I don't have the right color in the ceiling. We'll take care of that a little bit. Let's take this, we'll zoom out a little bit to make it easier to edit and I'll just go layer, mask, hide, take a brush at about 30% flow. Notice my flow up here is set to about 30% and I'm just going to tap in a little bit of that. And that just softened that shadow a little bit. That's all I needed to do there. That's fine. But I need to get rid of me. So that's why I've got when I do these typical two sided composites, me on the other side, layer mask, hide, take the brush and then edit myself out over here. I'm just going to keep this at 30% flow. There's not a lot of me to, to cancel out. And then I go like that. I noticed there's some other problems. Yeah, we got this big glare over here. We're going to fix that too. Not a problem. Okay. So now we've got what would be a well enough lit photo to start doing the flambient blending. Once again, one of the goals like I talk about through all the books, is that we need to have color back in all the areas so that we get an even distribution of color when we add light. So let's do that. I'm going to zoom out so we can get a good look here. Turn on our ambient layer. Now I'm, I have actions to do this, but I'll step through it. I'm going to turn that into luminosity blending mode, and then I'm going to drop the opacity down here to 50%. So we'll drag that down. And there are shortcut keys you can use for all this as well. Like using the five got me to 50%. So that looks pretty good. 
not too bad. So I could probably at this point just start adding on my window pulls, do all that. Let's zoom out here a little bit though. I wanna do a couple more things. First thing I wanna do is I wanna add more ambient in a few places and I wanna reduce it in a few places as well. So what I do in cases like this, especially when I've got more time, this is a very high-end home here in California. You should have seen the backyard, gorgeous place. So I'm gonna duplicate that layer, Control J, change its opacity to 100% and add a layer mask and just hide that. So I'm gonna zoom in here because what I wanted to do, even though it's a small detail, I wanted to add a little bit of extra light underneath the cabinets where they had that under cabinet lighting. So I'm just tapping that in there on this new layer up above here, so that's great. Okay, I've got a little too much bloom coming off these lights, so I'll go back to our original ambient layer, the 50-50, you might recall from other videos, and I'll just go layer mask reveal, and then take an eraser, and then with this eraser, I'll just kind of tap around those lights, just maybe once, twice, that's fine. Okay, another place too where I didn't like the ambient light was in this dark corner over here. So I'll erase a little bit of that too. Once again, 30% flow on this, and I'll just tap tap a little bit of that out and that's fine. Also up here there was some banister shadow that was showing up. Just kind of annoyed me, made it look a little dirty. So what I'm going to do is erase some of that too. Take the eraser and just tap some of that out of there. Very simple to do. Okay, now things are looking good. Still need to fix this shadow up here. We'll do that in a second. But now let's do the window pulls. So first window pull we had was this one. So what I'm going to do is move that all the way up to the top. We're gonna turn that into a darken mode and then layer mask hide. Very quickly on this then, all you have to do is draw a polygon around it. Very rough, you don't need to have to be close. I'm gonna even overlap on the couch, no big deal. Reverse your colors with X. Notice how they're changing over here on this color picker, on the color picker side over here. So you want them so that they're black and white, hit the delete key and deselect. I use control D. We'll do the same thing then with this other layer here. That was, as you recall, to get these windows over here. So I'll turn that into darken mode. And then we'll also do layer mask hide. In this case, I'll just use a brush. It's so far in the distance, I'm not worried about it. But before I do, I need to reverse my colors again so that they're white and black. Now I can paint on. Yeah, you could have used an eraser and all that. There's a, a thousand ways to do stuff in Photoshop. No big deal. Okay, now let's talk about this shadow up at the top and then we'll address this cabinet. First thing, super easy, just draw a polygon around that ceiling. That's fine, around that white area, okay? Now I've got an action that does this, but what you wanna do is basically select, modify, feather that by let's say five pixels. And then you go layer, new adjustment layer, which would be here, and then you want a hue saturation layer. What that does is that makes a hue saturation layer with that selection where now you can then drop that saturation down to where you want. And we'll drop it down about that much. We'll lighten it up a little bit too so it gets just a little bit brighter. That looks good. Now, if you want to get real picky and not include that fan, you could do a quick select on that. That would probably take care of it. We can do the same thing here if we want to actually to get a different look on this ceiling. Even though this ceiling was a type of gray, you can tell the difference because of the white crown molding. We'll just draw a very loose one. Yeah, we'll get that tiger in there, that cougar, whatever. And then we'll do the same thing. I've got an action that does that you can see it created that section there as well. So now I've got two different ceiling uh, layers that I've got to work with to desaturate, do whatever it is I want. Now, you've probably seen another video I did on this for kitchen cabinets, getting that color back. What we need to do is find the color first of this cabinet. And I believe that was with this layer, it is. So I'll use the color picker tool and I'll select the color on that cabinet. Let's just turn all these layers back on Underneath of your hue saturation layers, just to be on the safe side, this is where you want to do this. You go up to layer, and then what you want is a new fill layer and a solid color, and call it whatever you'd like. What you want though, is you want the mode to be in color mode, like that, okay? And it's gonna select the color you just selected. Now it's showing everything, so you just invert that mask. You can do Control I. Now take a polygon tool and draw around the cabinet. You don't have to get right up to the edges. You really just want to get the areas that are a little bit uh, offended, like even here on the banister, it got there's a picture sticking out there, so we'll just get around there. That's it. 
take a brush, low flow, and then you get sloppy and then just start brushing that in there. Just tap a few of those in. Deselect, zoom back out. That's looking pretty good, not too bad. If this was still offending you up here with this shadow, there's still another fix you can get. And that's if you do, we'll zoom all the way out here. So select your very top layer, do Control, Alt, Shift, E. Boom, now you have one single layer of everything. That's it, you could turn that on, turn the rest of it off. Now, what I like to do up here is I would select a color, maybe right around there. Use the quick selection tool to just work in that area. So that would be right about there. We'll deselect these other areas like around the fan, like that, that would probably be fine. Of course, we don't want that wall. Now what we can do is we're going to take a brush and we're just going to brush in that color very lightly with a low flow, like that. Boom. And that's it. Now, if that's a little bit too much and we need to back that off, we turn on all the layers and then we can put a layer mask, layer mask reveal, and then you can just tap out some of what you have right there. Okay. Then of course, the last step, which I always do is I will layer flatten that image. I will save it. And then we go back over like usual, as I show with all the other presets that we would apply some type of bump. I'd probably apply the, this one here. And there's our image, all done. Well, I hope this video was useful for you and that you can use some of this in your photography as well. If you did like this video and you wanna see more, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. It won't cost anything. And as soon as one of these videos is posted, you'll be the first to know. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, take care, be safe, and get out there and shoot something.